If you study history, economics, politics, sociology or philosophy, one of the first names you are likely to hear is that of Adam Smith, the man known as the father of modern economics. Born in 1723 in Scotland, Smith's most famous work, The Wealth of Nations, reflects on the power of the free market over the mercantilist economies that many countries opted for at the time. In a mercantilist economy, a country takes a strong hand in the business of their citizens, restricting trading with other nations, monopolising companies and heavily subsidising business and encouraging colonial expansion. Adam Smith said that such widespread intervention at the state level was not only unnecessary, but hurtful to countries' economies. And in The Wealth of Nations, Smith uses the metaphor of the invisible hand of the market to show how left to its own devices, a market corrects itself, leading to growth. That it was scarcity, need, self-interest and drive that were the forces that drove wealth creation. And so, government should have a laissez-faire attitude towards business. In one of his most famous lines, he said that it is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own interest. He advocated for the division of labour and used the example of a pin factory, showing that making a pin can be divided into 14 steps that could enable 10 men to make 48,000 pins per day, whereas if they did it all themselves, they could only make 10 or 20 per day. 200 years later, Leonard Reed would make a similar argument for the free market in his essay, I Pencil. Reed said that the simple pencil was a miracle of freedom. Not a single person on the face of this earth knows how to make me, the pencil says in the essay written in the first person. The wood is from cedar trees in California, which take the knowledge of saws and axes and motors to mill. The graphite is mined somewhere else with totally different skills. The brass that holds the rubber in place somewhere else and the paint somewhere else. And finally the rubber extracted from rapeseed oil that could come from the other side of the world. Yet all of this comes together to build a pencil for 20 cents. On top of this, Smith commended the saving of capital to invest in new ventures, citing this as the driving force of economic development. The first edition of The Wealth of Nations was sold out within six months and has shaped the decisions of politicians and economists ever since. It started the classical school of economics, which today has evolved into the neoclassical school. Ibn Khaldun was born in Tunis, modern-day Tunisia, in 1332, some 400 years before Smith. As a historian, sociologist and demographer, Khaldun was one of the most respected and influential scholars of the Middle Ages. Khaldun's most well-known work, the Mukaddima, is an ambitious text that some say is the first attempt at a philosophy of history. It deals with Islamic theology, science, history, sociology, and like Smith, economics. And the similarities between Smith and Khaldun's work are striking. Like Smith, Khaldun points to labour, not gold or silver, as the source of wealth and advocates for the division of labour in the same way Smith did. He said that when six or ten persons, including a smith and a carpenter to make the tools, and others who are in charge of the oxen, the ploughing of the soil, the harvesting of the ripe grain and all the other agricultural activities, undertake to obtain their food and work toward that purpose either separately or collectively, and thus obtain through their labour a certain amount of food, that amount will be food for a number of people many times their own. The combined labour produces more than the needs and necessities of the workers. Talking about supply and demand, Khaldun said that when goods are few and rare, their prices go up. On the other hand, when the country is near and the roads safe for travelling, there will be many to transport the goods, thus they will be found in large quantities and the prices will go down. Khaldun's work didn't reach the Western world until 1697, and even then it was a simple biography of him in a French Orientalist's work, Bibliothèque Orientale. Smith could have been exposed to Khaldun's ideas, if not directly, then through the rise of the Ottoman Empire 
and the travel chatter and exchange of ideas proliferated by increased business and merchant travel between Europe, North Africa and the Middle East. So while it's Smith that has been more widely read and more widely remembered, should it not be Ibn Khaldun that should take the title of the father of modern economics? If you like these videos and would like to support me making more, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook by clicking the links in the description below. You can like this video and subscribe to the Then and Now channel to see more. And if you're feeling really generous, you can pledge as little as a dollar towards the creation of each new video. You can click here to find out more. Thank you.